Hello Accounting 101 students. In this video, we're going to go over some of the content in our chapter one through four study guide. And in particular, we're going to focus on the examples included for chapter three, which are going to be taken from our textbook, problem 3.2a at the end of the chapter. And all of the information that you need um, for this part of the study guide is included within the study guide. So there's two things that we're going to be doing with these examples. We're going to perform transaction analysis, which basically means we're going to read through the description and we're going to determine what accounts are being impacted by that transaction and whether they affect your assets, your liabilities, or equity. To set us up, I included some of the asset accounts that relate to this problem in this respective area. So we have cash, accounts receivable, abbreviated AR. We have inventory, prepaids and supplies. I included this in one column and fixed assets, which refers to your property plan and equipment. So all of these are the assets that we're going to impact in this problem. And then we have our liabilities and equity on the opposite side of the accounting equation. So for liabilities, we have accounts payable, abbreviated as AP. Other payables and other liabilities are separately included in another column. And then we have a column for notes payable. For equity, we have common stock and retained earnings. Retained earnings is further subdivided between revenues, expenses, and dividends. When we have an increase in our revenues, where this is going to lead to an increase in retained earnings. When we have expenses or dividends, this is going to reduce our retained earnings. So we're going to go ahead and go through several examples for the transaction analysis. And after we do the transaction analysis, you need to record the journal entry in the correct journal entry format, which includes the date, the account titles, and a brief explanation, and the dollar amounts that you're going to debit and credit in their respective columns. So the first example is on May 1st, stockholders invested 15,000 cash in the business in exchange for common stock. So this means that the company received cash. So we're going to have an increase in our cash column due to the increase in our cash balance of 15,000. And we're going to have a corresponding increase in common stock. And you can see that the accounting equation balances out where the 15,000 in the assets equals 15,000 in the liabilities and equity. To journalize this transaction, we're going to include the date of May 1st that is provided in this problem. The account you're going to debit is always listed on the top. And our debit and credit rules indicate that every time we have an increase in our assets, that will be a debit. If we had a decrease, it would be a credit. So our cash account is going to have a debit of 15,000, and we're going to include that in the debit column. Next, we're going to include the account we're going to credit. And with our debit and credit rules, when we have an increase in our liabilities or equity, that will be noted as a credit. It's going to be the opposite as debit, as our assets, which are going to increase with a debit. So you wanna notice that our debit and credit rules um, are opposite for assets versus liabilities and equity. So we're going to credit our common stock account and we're going to have that corresponding credit in the credit column, $15,000. And a brief explanation is we have issued stock for cash. In the next transaction, this happens on May 2nd, we paid $600 for office rent for the month. So anytime you pay money, there's going to be a decrease in cash. So I'm going to note negative 600 in my cash column. And 
that office rent is going to be considered rent expense. So I'm going to have a decrease in retained earnings of $600. And when we record our journal entry, this is going to be recorded on May 2nd. And we're going to now realize that we have a decrease in cash. So our cash is now going to have a credit of $600. So that's the reason why I include that in the second line. And we're going to debit our rent expense for $600. And a brief explanation can include paid rent. So now we're going to get to the next example. And it takes some time to practice and get into the hang of this. On May 3rd, the company purchased $500 of supplies on account. So we purchased supplies, so we're going to have an increase in our supplies of $500. So I'm going to include in plus 500. Um, in your Wiley, you want to pay attention to the formatting and see if Wiley wants you to include the plus sign every time there's an increase. And then we notice that we didn't pay cash. We made this purchase on account. So there's going to be a corresponding increase in accounts payable of $500. So when we record our journal entry, this will be recorded on May 3rd, and we're going to have an increase in our supplies account for $500. And supplies is an asset, and every time your assets increase, that's going to be a debit. And we're going to have a corresponding increase in our liability. So that increase in liabilities would be a credit. So we're gonna credit accounts payable, which is the amount that we owe to our vendors and our suppliers for $500. And we would include in a brief description, um, purchased supplies on account. And this is important to note because later on, we need to pay off this liability. Next, on May 5th, the company paid $150 to advertise in the county news. So in this simple example, we're going to start off by noticing that we paid money. So this is going to be a minus $150 to cash. And sometimes you're gonna pay in advance, right? But in this example, because it didn't tell us we paid in advance, I'm just going to include this as advertising expenses, which is going to reduce our retained earnings for 150. Our journal entry will be recorded on May 5th, and we're going to have a decrease in cash. So when our asset account decreases, that's going to be listed as a credit. And you'll notice I don't need to include any plus or minus signs because the wording and the placement of the transaction within the journal entry informs others what's going on with that transaction. So a decrease in cash will be noted with a credit. And I'm going to record advertising expenses of 150 in my debit column. And a brief description can include paid for advertising. Next, on May 9th, the company received cash. So if the company received cash, that's going to be an increase to my cash account for $1,400. And the reason why I received cash is for consulting services performed, which means now I have earned revenue. So that is going to increase my retained earnings. 
on May 9th. I'm going to debit my cash account because my cash has increased. And I'm going to credit my service revenue account because I have earned revenue by performing consulting services. And you'll notice that an increase in your revenue account is always going to be a credit. And you can include in a short description for this transaction. All right, now on May 12th, the company paid $200 cash dividend. So anytime I see the word paid, that means there's going to be a decrease in cash and the amount is going to be 200. And this is going to reduce my retained earnings. So minus 200. And then for my journal entry, I will include the date of May 12th. I'm going to debit my dividends account for 200. And I'm going to credit my cash account for 200. On May 15th, the company performed consulting services on account. So this means that they have earned the revenue of 4,200, but instead of receiving cash now, they're going to receive cash later from their customer or their client. So we're going to record our journal entry on May 15th which will include an increase in accounts receivable, which is the amount that our customer or our client owes us, which is a resource, that's why it's considered an asset. And we're also going to record the corresponding service revenue of 4,200. And this is for consulting services performed on account. So we're going to go ahead and continue the remainder of these transactions in the next video, but I hope that from these first seven transactions, you're starting to get to see how these transactions are being included in the tabular analysis and also how the journal entries are being recorded. And as we go through some more examples, hopefully you'll feel more comfortable doing the journal entries on your own.